Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiments, and in today's video, we're going to be engraving glass. So let's get into it. Throughout this video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of testing. So I have been engraving glass for a little while, and I've found some settings that work pretty well for me, but I've also seen a lot of people struggle with it. So as part of this video, I'm going to run through a few different settings and a few different tests so that you can see how they actually turn out based on what I'm doing and help you narrow down which ones might work best for you with your machinery. For this video, I'm going to be using these glasses that I got from Webstaurant uh, store online. They were about $2 a glass, I believe. The one thing I've learned over the years about engraving glass is that the cheaper quality the glass is, the better it typically tends to engrave. I've tried to do the expensive champagne style glasses and it never looked really good and I always struggled with it. But when it was like a cheap glass from Walmart or Target or online suppliers, it usually turned out a lot better. Now, I'm not sure why that is necessarily, but that is something to consider. So there are online suppliers like Discount Mugs or Webstaurant or even Amazon or whatever that you can get quite a few glasses pretty cheap. So I did buy two cases of glasses. I think they were uh, 24 glasses total, maybe and they were about two bucks a piece. So for less than 50 bucks, I have about 24 to play around with and just mess with and see what happens. Over the course of the video, I'm going to be doing three to four different tests. I'm going to be changing the graphic as well as the settings for the machine. Before I get into that, I do wanna say thank you to Epilogue Laser, who is the sponsor of this video. I've been using their lasers since about 2013, maybe 2014. I've been using them for quite a while. I've always had a good experience. I am going to be using the Fusion Maker, which is one of their newer lasers for this video. It is a 30 watt model, uh, and I'm going to be using that with the rotary attachment. I will say that the rotary attachment will work on the Maker and the Fusion Edge, so it does swap between the two. But I will leave a link in the description below to the machine that I'm using. And if you have any questions along the way, leave those in the comments below as well, and I'll do my best to answer all of those. All right, let's get into the video and try engraving some glass. For test number one, I'm going to be using a graphic that is 100% RGB black. Now, this is just because this seems to be what everybody does right off the bat. I'm gonna send this over to the machine, and what we're going to do is use the built-in settings that come in the machine itself. I'm not going to change them in any way, but I am going to do center center engraving. And if you're unfamiliar with how to use a rotary, I have a couple of videos on that. I'll put one of them in the cards. Uh, so I'm not going to walk through all of that. But what I want to do is I want to do center center. I'm going to go to my settings for engraving. And in here, there's one for glass. They do use 300 DPI. So the settings from the factory are 300 DPI, 30% speed, 100% power, no dithering pattern whatsoever. This is pretty close to what I found to be good. Uh, not exactly what I do use, but it's a good starting point. So I'm going to go ahead, send this over to the machine. I will engrave it onto this glass. I'll clean the surface just with a rag. I'm not doing any kind of prep work on any of these. I'm just going to engrave them as is. I'm not going to do any kind of dish soap method or wet paper towel or whatever. I'm just going to be using the glass itself. So let's go ahead and machine this first one, and I will show you how it turns out. I just finished engraving test number one. I don't typically use the setting when I'm engraving glass, and I'm gonna show you why. So here's the glass. 
So I put the cloth in so you can see the logo better. Actually, that might work even better. So here's the glass. You will see that there are kind of like lines in it. Might be hard to tell, but you can see the lines a little bit. Now it engraved, okay. The logo itself comes out. It does look pretty nice. But overall, it does look like lines when it's engraved. I can actually see the lines in it. So this isn't something that I would sell as is. But I do notice that this is where most people typically start out. And that's why I don't typically use this setting. Is It's going to have no real uh, dispersion of the laser. It's going to look like it went line by line. So for test number two, I'm going to add both a dithering pattern and I'm going to be adding a different element to the design. For test number two, I'm going to be changing the graphic itself, and that's the only thing I'm going to change. So originally, when people start out, they tend to do a 100% black design. I'm going to be using an 80% black. So to do that, I go over to my colors. So right now, they're all joined together. But if I select all of the black and click on black here, I'm going to go to grayscale. I'm going to change it from 100% grayscale to 80% grayscale. It looks like I missed a little piece. Grab that one too. And I'm going to make all of that gray. Typically, this will help with engraving uh, just to give it a little bit more dispersion of sorts. So I'm going to send this over to the machine. And I'm going to use the same built-in settings because I want to show just the difference of going from 100% black to, say, 80% black. And actually, what I'll do is I'll actually go to, say, 70% black, so it's a little bit more different here. So I'll go to 70. And print that. I'm going to use the glass engraving, same settings, 300 dpi. 30% speed, 100% power, standard dithering, bottom up. So let's go engrave that and we'll see the difference. Okay, so here's test number one and two side by side. So the one is on the left, the second one is on the right. The only difference is the fact that the right is using an 80 or 70% gray graphic and the left one is using 100% black. So here's the graphic for the 100% black. You can kind of see the lines in it a little bit. It doesn't look bad overall, but it's definitely not as good as it could be. So instead of lines on the 70% black, you'll actually see more spaced out dots. So this is because the DPI and the grayscale work together to give you a different effect. Now, this still isn't a great look, but it does do the dispersion a little bit better. But that's the difference of just changing to grayscale and what it can do from glass to glass. For test three, I'm going to be changing a few different things. So this is a setting that actually came from a fellow Epilog user. And if you search the Epilog groups, you'll find a lot of these settings throughout there. And this is actually a setting that I have used in the past myself. So this setting is going to be 70% black graphic, just like we used in test two. But for the speed, I'm going to use 70%. The DPI, I'm going to make 400. And for the dithering, I'm going to use Jarvis. Now, keep in mind, I when I'm doing this, this speed is probably too fast for a 30 watt. Um, that, I think, was based on a 60 watt. So. For this, I'm going to try to compensate for that. Instead of 70%, 
I'm going to use 35% because this setting came from a 60 watt laser, not a 30 watt. So the big differences here are going to be, I'm changing the DPI to 400 and I'm changing the dithering to Jarvis and I'm going to go ahead and run that one. So we'll run this, see how it turns out and then I'll compare it to the first two. So here's test number three. So in order, we have one, two, three, left to right. Again, the first one on the left has the lines in it, 300 DPI, standard settings from the machine. Test number two is a 70% black graphic. You can see it spaces them out at 300 DPI, which gives it a little bit better grouping and look, but it is to spread out for a nice frosty look. Then test number three, which is the same 70% black graphic. It is 400 DPI. I also use the Jarvis dithering pattern. It does turn out like a nice frosty kind of look. And that is the setting that I typically always use. But there are your three right next to each other. There are the three main tests that I wanted to show all of you so that you can judge for yourself what you want to do. I'm going to run a fourth test just for fun. Now this one, I'm going to use a different dithering pattern. I'm going to use the Stucky pattern. I'm also going to be engraving it at 500 DPI. So I'll show you another DPI level just so you can see the difference. Keep in mind that as you increase your DPI, your engraving time will typically increase as well. But you may also get a much better result. So in here, same 70% black graphic. I'm going to change it to 500 DPI. I will keep the speed the same. And instead of Jarvis, I will use Stucky. And I'm going to print that one over to the machine. Again, this is one where I've used this in the past as well. There's no real right answer to what's going to look best for your customer. A lot of it is honestly personal opinion because your customer may like something that comes out that we may not think is good. So some of it's just personal preference. But with that in mind, let's go engrave test number four and I will show you what it turns out like. Here are the four tests, one through four left to right. On the fourth one, it actually looks very similar to the third test with the Jarvis. I actually prefer the Jarvis look over the Stucky. I also think that the 400 DPI is a better compromise. It reduces your time. It gives a very similar look. So not only are you saving some time, but you also get a nice clean result. So overall, this is the one I'd go with, which was test number three, which is a 70% black graphic. It is 100 power. It was, I think, 25 speed, 400 DPI, and the Jarvis dithering pattern. But that's how I engrave glass. So if you don't have the dithering option, uh, you may have to play around with your machine and what's available to figure out what will work the best. But I have found that using that 70% black grayscale graphic mixed with the speed and power settings that I used does a pretty good job, but adding that dithering effect really makes it pop and look really nice. So overall, that's what I like the best for glass engraving. 
and it should save you a lot of time with experimenting on your own and give you a baseline of where to start. And then you can just tweak a couple of things to find what you need. Again, huge thanks to Epilogue for sponsoring the video and making it possible for me to do this. I love being able to experiment with different materials for you and help you save some time along the way. I will be doing a glass engraving live as part of my membership. If you are interested in the membership, if you go to lasersmadesimple.com slash membership, you can see all of the details there for the group lives. They are recorded, so you can go back and watch them later. But I will deep dive more during that live. I'll probably do some engraving during the live as well. And if you guys have questions, we can experiment during that process. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share things along the way. But that's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. And now it's time to go make a drink in the brand new glasses. See ya.